Welcome to the lecture on Z score. In the previous lecture, I told you Z test is one of the tests that we can apply to compare the means. In order to know what is Z test, it is important to know what do you mean by Z score. I hope you can remember the lecture on normal distribution and standard normal distribution. If you can't remember, please go and watch the lecture on normal distribution and standard normal distribution. I told you in that lecture, we can have different types of normal distributions. Either like this, like this, like this. Different shapes. You can have several means. But in the process of standardization, you create a distribution called standard normal distribution. In standard normal distribution, the mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. So we have standard deviations in the x axis 1, standard deviation 1, standard deviation 2. If I recall you, mean plus or minus 1 is the approximately 68%. Mean plus or minus 2SD, approximately 95.4%. Mean plus or minus 3SD, approximately 99.7%. This process of transformation from normal distribution to standard normal distribution, I promise you that I will discuss later. Now, I am going to discuss this specific process. For that, you need to know the formula for Z score. Z score equals x minus x bar if this is a sample if this is a population instead of x bar you have to use mu divided by standard deviation okay now we have a normal distribution where the mean is 50 let's assume that this is the mass distribution of a class and standard deviation is 10 because of that at first standard deviation we have value of 60 and minus 1 sd we have value of 40 so we have 70 here at 2 standard deviation and we have 30 here in minus 2 standard deviation once we standardize the mean will become 0 standard deviation will become 1 now i told you the formula is x minus x bar divided by standard deviation. When your mark is x, you will get z score for your mark. Assume that your mark is almost equal to the mean. Your mark is 50. We have one individual. We will name that A. He has got 50 marks and we have another individual B. He has got 60 marks. Another individual, he has got 70 marks. Another individual D who has got 30 marks. Let's calculate the Z score. In Z score, X is his own mark, which is 50, and you know that the mean is 50 divided by its standard deviation, which is 10 here. So this equals 0. So now you can understand this mean 50 has become 0. Simply this is the procedure of changing the gross values into the standard value. So the standard normal distribution has standard values, standardized values in its x-axis. So all the values in this x-axis are called as z-values or z-scores. So let's calculate Z score for B, C and D. Now this is the formula we are calculating for B. Actually B, his gross mark is 60 marks. He is one standard deviation away from the mean. One standard deviation away from the mean. So X equals 60, X bar is 50 and standard deviation is 10. So this equals 1, so B, so B is somewhere here and we know that A is somewhere here at the center. Let's calculate for C, 70 minus 
50 divided by 10 is 2. So C's standardized score is 2. C is somewhere here. So where's D? We'll calculate for D as well. D, the marks, he has got 30 marks. So 30 minus 50 divided by 10 is minus 2. So D is in somewhere here. I hope you are very clear about standardized score or Z score. Okay, if I recall that again, we know that A has got 50 marks, B has got 60, C has got 70, and D has got 30 marks. Their standardized scores are 0, 1, 2, and minus 2. Now, I will draw the standard normal distribution. We have the bell shaped curve where at the center we have 0 and we have 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2. Okay, now we know that A has got equal marks to the mean. Assume that there are 1000 candidates. 1000 candidates sat for this particular exam. Now you can identify what is the place of A? What is the place of A? What is the place of A? 50% of the students have got less marks than A because he is at the center. So what about B? B we know that he is somewhere here. So we know that in this region, the percentage of individuals are 16%. So you can interpret only 16% out of this 1000 have got better marks than B. You can identify the exact position of the candidate by looking at the Z score. And C is at plus 2 standard deviation. Now you can identify only 2.5% of the students, approximately 25 students out of this thousand should have marks better than C. D is here at minus 2 standard deviation. So only 25 of the students have less marks than D. D is more towards the bottom of the marks and C is more towards the top of the marks. Now you should be able to comment on his or her position if you see the standard score. Example, we have a person, uh, we will name him as X. His set score is 1.64 plus if he is 1.64 X should be somewhere between 1 and 2, somewhere here. So you can have an idea about the exact place of a particular candidate or particular observation by looking at the Z score. I hope you are clear about Z score, but we have another question now. The question is, of course, as you know, Mean plus or minus this level, we know that 68% is there. But what will happen if somebody is somewhere here? We don't know the exact value. In this standard normal distribution, standard normal distribution, as we know, 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, we know the position. We know that 68% are here, 95% are here. Because of that, we can get some idea. But what will happen if somebody is somewhere here? As the 8.64. We don't know the exact position. It's difficult to guess. For that, you can do two major things. One is you can integrate the formula for this normal curve. As this lecture series is specially for non-mathematical students, I will just write the formula only. You know that if you can remember, in normal Cartesian plane, 
we know that we call this as y equals mx plus c. This one y equals mx. This one y equals mx minus c. So like that, we have a formula for each of these lines. So like that, this line, this bell shaped curve has its own formula. I will write that formula. fx equals 1 divided by square root 2 phi sigma square e to the power minus half x minus mu divided by sigma total square. So this is kind of long formula which is not available for non-mathematical students. So you forget about this, you have to do something called integration. So we are not in going to integrate this formula, but there is another easy way that is using z table. There are tables created like the log values that you are doing in your all level mathematics. There are z tables which contains the z values where you can easily find out any of the places, any of the proportion. If z score is 0.64, you can identify what is the percentage under that or above that. If something is here, you can identify what are the proportions in the right side to the, that line and the left side to that line. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss about set table. Until that, keep in mind, set score is one of the major and one of the most important statistical tool that we are using for many, for many of the disciplines, especially to rank the students of many of the major examinations. Thank you very much.